So this is the royal road progression. A major four, a major five, a minor three, and a minor sixth. And in this video, I'll show you how to play it, why these chords go well together, and lastly show you two easy ways you can stitch melody ideas around these chords. Hey there, I hope you're doing well. If you're new to the channel, my name is Steve and I'm a guitarist on a mission to help others develop their own unique math rock style voice on guitar. And as part of that mission, I'm sharing chord progressions just like the one in this video, which I've learned over the last 20 years of playing. In my early days, I struggled to understand what chord names were, what these confusing names meant, and why certain chords you know, worked to well together in the progression. And of course this left me feeling very frustrated and stuck in my progress. But now after many years of learning, I've developed strategies for understanding chords and progressions and I want to pass that on to you through these videos. So what is the Royal Road progression exactly and how can you play it? Well this chord progression is hugely popular in Japan in J-pop, J-rock, anime, anime soundtracks sorry and even JRPGs. While I'm not the biggest fan of anime or J-rock or J-pop I have played quite a few JRPGs over the years so there's no wonder why this chord progression feels so familiar to me. Oh by the way Final Fantasy 7 is my favourite JRPG for those who wanted to know. So this chord progression is a major four, major five, minor third, and minor sixth. And in the key of C major, we could play it all as seventh chords. So we've got F major seven as our fourth chord, G seven, the G dominant seven as the fifth, E minor seven as the third, and an A minor seven as the sixth there. To me, it feels like this chord progression is telling some kind of story that keeps on looping. And that's the power of this chord progression, the fact that it doesn't go to the primary tonic, in our case, the first, the key in the key of C, that's going to be the the C major, meaning this chord progression doesn't feel fully resolved and it can just happily keep on looping away. These chords go together well because our major four is starting off as a subdominant and that sets up our dominant chord here. And our dominant chord has got a lot of tension builds up and it wants to resolve usually to the, to the first to give that stable sense of resolution. But instead we go five to the minor third, which gives a subtle sense of resolution because it shares two of the notes with our home chord there. And we call this chord in functional terms, the median. This third naturally leads to the sixth. This acts as like a, a soft resolution, more of a passing chord back to the start of the cycle again. So now that you're more familiar with how to play this chord progression and why these chords work well together, now I want to show you two easy ways I like to play chords and melody using this progression as an example. Back when I was a music student at university, I remember finally mastering the extended seventh chords, the kind that I'm using in this video. I told my guitar teacher and he said, great, now I'll learn the three inversions of each of those chords. And my heart kind of sank because it felt like I had to start all over again. So instead of following his advice, I put it off for years before I finally went and learned these inversions properly. And looking back, if my teacher had just shown me some ways that I could have implied inversions, it probably would have motivated me to put the effort in to learn them. So in this segment, I want to show you a quick way you can apply chord inversions so you don't have to make the same mistake I did. And don't worry, you don't need to know any inversions already. And if you didn't know already, an inversion is where you take a chord, you keep the same notes, but you're gonna use the other notes as the root of that chord. So for example, here's a C major seven, and going up a third we can find its funky second inversion there then we've got the fifth note here for the second inversion and then the last possible one is going to be that seventh as the root and then back an octave higher. So my process works like this. For every chord you play in the progression, there's a complementary chord inversion hiding from the fifth note of each chord. If that all sounds confusing, let me just show you. So for our F major seven, we've got the fifth here. If you're familiar with your power chords, you can find it easily here. And there's going to be a second inversion that you can play starting from that fourth string root there like so. And we can do the same for the G7. Again. 
Here's our fifth. And there's that second inversion. And then again. And then from there, our E minor seven. Here's the fifth. There's the second inversion. And then lastly, our A minor seven. Do you need to play inversions after each chord? Well, of course not. I'm just trying to get you to think about how you could use inversions creatively. But by doing so, you'll soon find that there are only so far that this chord inversion trick can take you when it comes to crafting an idea. So I'd like to add one more thing to be able to confidently stitch melody ideas in between these chords. Interrupting Steve here, if you're interested in learning chord progressions just like the one that's in this video, then be sure to join my free weekly newsletter where you'll join hundreds of other guitarists getting a juicy chord progression landing in your inbox every single Wednesday. There's a link in the description to join and thank you and back to the video. As guitarists one of the first scales we typically learn is the minor pentatonic and then we're encouraged to learn all of the other five shapes. When I went to college, I knew shape one of the minor pentatonic, but I wasn't familiar with the other four. Our lecturer at the time was well aware of this common problem, and he came up with a cleverer way to help us learn these shapes quickly. He sat us all in a circle, and each person had to play a different shape of the minor pentatonic scale, starting from shape one. And as the scale got passed around the circle, so to speak. It kept us really on our toes thinking about paying attention to what each shape sounded like and thinking about which shape that I would be playing next when it <laughs> uh, came to my turn. I ended up using a lot of these shapes in improvisation classes and now, later in life, one of the ways I use them is for creating melody ideas alongside chord progressions. So let me show you how. When it comes to writing melody using the pentatonic, first I'll work out which pentatonic scale I can primarily use for our example. In our case we're just in the key of C major which means I could use the the C major pentatonic or, or the A minor pentatonic. Next I'll go through each chord in the progression and work out where the nearest pentatonic shape is around that particular chord. So for example our F major there is the there's that second shape there or I could play the um, That melody around that third shape there. The G7, again, is set definitely around that, that third shape, or, or I could even be playing that fourth shape there. For the A, uh, E minor 7, it's going to be mostly that fourth shape, I'm thinking. And then, same goes for the A minor 7. And then what I like to do is combine the using the pentatonic and using the chord inversions to create some kind of melody idea, in this case kind of a funky idea. So let me go through chord by chord here. And now I can play this inversion, but can also use that minor pentatonic shape, right? I could even lead to that fifth chord there, quite nicely with voice leading there, right? I can do the same here, chord inversion. And that sets up the E minor chord nicely there. And here I could do the... I could use that fourth shape of the A minor pentatonic. And lastly... It's getting a bit too much around that... Maybe that same shape there, so... Maybe I could... If I can fit it on the guitar... Play some tapping thing like that and when you put it all together it can sound something like this And to leave you with one last thing, I want to test your knowledge about this chord progression by asking you what chord would you add to the end of this progression for the most smooth change?
let me know down below in the comments. If you'd like to learn another beautiful chord progression like the one in this video, then be sure to check out this video next. A big thanks to the patrons that support this channel. You can grab yourself a lovely chord chart by checking the link in the description or by heading over to Patreon. Thanks for the support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.